。喂，好，呃，好，那那我们下一场最后一场的议程就准备开始，就是差不多三点半准时开始。然后下一个讲者是呃 Victor Lin， 那他是来自 BTQ 的呃。B T Q 的讲者，然后他要讲的是 k i l o n 就是他们的一个语语言。好，那我们就把时间给 Victor。哎、okay. uh, ，Hello everyone. Um, initially my talk would be English. Um,、uh, just wondering, is anyone here who don't speak Mandarin? No. Uh, oh, this one. Okay, sure, great. Then I will be speaking English. Yeah, I I, I was going to be this. It was going to be English anyway. Okay. Go full screen. How do I go full screen? This one. What? 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 Uh huh. Ah,、oh, okay, cool. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Victor. Um,、uh, this talk it will be super fast because I initially made these slides for fifteen five minutes and later out I, f I, f I just found out I only got like thirty minutes. Um, but yeah, it's the last one, so I guess we can. Spend as much as we want, right? Uh, so Kilom is a、uh, language that was designed for fast, private, and secure zero knowledge applications.、Um, and we are from BTQ. BTQ is a post、uh, is, is a quantum technology company focused on building post quantum infrastructures、uh, in blockchains, such as blockchain, because I believe we have other solutions now.、Um, and we we have a lot of、uh, experts on、uh, post quantum cryptography. And of course, Kilom is one of our project. Um, Kilon is open source now, so you can go to GitHub and see our open source repo.、Um, we have separate two separate repo for Kilon. One is the compiler, which、uh, can which usually will be built into native binaries, and we one is the language itself. And of course, we have documentation, so go there if you want to learn Kilon by yourself.、Uh, oh, that's all. Okay, so here's、uh, okay here's some outlines here.、Uh, this is the main. Three parts I will be doing today,、uh, and later there are some details about Kilom infrastructures that I will probably not go into details because we don't have time for that.、Uh, but I still want、uh, to give a little bit everything for everyone. So first of all, I still introduce from zero knowledge proof. If some of you who don't know zero knowledge proof is, I will give a very 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 brief examples, and later I will introduce Kilom and talk about why we need a language for building zero knowledge proof applications. Okay, so what are zero knowledge proofs? As a lot of you might have known, pr zero knowledge proofs,、uh, proofs of knowledge, are things that help the prover and to show the verifier that they know something. But this is very, very a、uh, general idea. It, you don't know what it actually means, right? So, for example, a password is something、uh, the prover may want to show that they know something.、Um, but telling the verifier the password itself is very dangerous. So you need a hash. Uh, for example,、uh, is, which is a common practice, they want to prove a lot of prover to show verifier that they know something without revealing it. So, for example, this is called the Alibaba cave example. But these two, these two people here are called Alice and Bob, not Ali and Baba.、Uh, so, if if you if、uh, if there is a cave, it's a circle, it's a circle shaped、uh, cave, and there's a door in the cave, and Alice can go and Bob. Can go into the cave and check that he cannot open the door in in the cave. But Alice know how to want to show Bob that she know how to open the door. So what she can do, she what can she do? She can go into the cave and go out on the other side. And Bob can watch at the entrance of the cave and see、uh, Alice has turned a circle around and successful, successfully pass through the door. So. Now, as it has successfully proved Bob that she knows how to open the door without revealing how she opened the door. So, what what's more what's a more concrete?、Uh, I think there's a more concrete definition about this、uh, little knowledge proof. So, it's not just about a verifier,、uh, not about a prover showing they know something. It's more about they showing that they know an answer to a problem, and without revealing it, answer itself. But more concretely.、Um, In the setting of、uh, existing zero knowledge proof systems,、uh, the the system allows the prover to show verifier that there is no solution to accept a variable such that it satisfies certain constraints. What does it mean?、Uh, let's to、um, before we dive into that, let's take a let's take a look on、uh, applications of zkps. 
We have identity, identity, v, identity verification, uh, privacy preserving, cryptocurrency transactions, voting systems, uh, medical and health records. All of these things require uh, you know, a lot of privacy requirements. Uh, but uh, they want to, for example, in voting system, you want to reveal that you're actually a citizen, but you don't want to reveal your actual identity. So how are EKB constructed? Most many protocols now from using the computational circuit model uh, by circuit uh, actually means a, a set of variables and constraints. So these circuits are often formulated with a bunch of polynomial equations, or as we call it, uh, with an analogy of circuits, we call them gates. Um, some common examples of these interfaces are RNCS and AIR, or AIR, uh, in short. But most we will focus on RNCS today, and this, this is also what Kilom uh, mainly produce. Okay, so let's do a quick review here. What's a typical ZKP application development workflow? So we have problem descriptions, which are constraints, and we put them into the proving systems, and proving systems give out two programs, one's, a prover, one's for prover, one's for ver verifier, and the prover uh, takes the public problem description and input their private information and generate this code, so-called proof. And verifier take the proof and the uh, open problem description and s verify that this proof actually satisfy their uh, constraints without getting uh, the private information that was input by the prover. So the RNCS is the problem description. Uh, and the proven systems uh, include Grow16, or Plunk, or Aurora, which Aurora is the one we use right now because uh, we want it, it's a potent, po uh, it's a quantum safe protocol. Um, but uh, for existing projects on, for, on Ethereum, for example, uh, they use a lot of Grow16 and Plunk is, uh, there are a lot of uh, extended version of Plunk systems. We, we call them Plunkish. Uh, but I think they are still in research. So what, what, we, what do we need a language? Because the descriptions can be very, very complicated. Um, so we separate the problem descriptions and the constraints. So problem descriptions now can be, we should, we should express them in more human readable ways instead of weird constraints like R1CS. Uh, we will see how R1CS look like later. So there, are, there, are do, there have already been some works some language that uh, do some basically the same thing as Kilon, but I will also talk about why Kilon, uh, why we need a new DSL for this kind of problem. Okay, so let's see how complicated RNCS can be. RNCS, why is RNCS? RNCS is a, is the constraint systems for expressing a computation that can be used for generating zero knowledge proofs. So, Grow16 and Plunge and Aurora, this three proofs is an all use R1CS as their interface. So it itself does not contain in any information for the knowledge proof, but it's just a description of variables and their uh, constraints. And R1CS comprises a set of constraints of a set of variables. Each constraint consists of three linear combinations of variables arranged as follows. Uh, so there, th you can see here are three polynomials. Um, so for for a set of variables that's from x0 to xn, you can construct a constraint like this, uh, where a, a0 to am, b0 to bn, c0 to cm are all constants. So this, this is a linear combination. Um, and in most systems, uh, they are most be elements of the same finite field. This is very important because this is required by the cryptography system. And this is where all the problem comes from. So, for example, um, if we want a, if we want a, uh, we have a problem here, and like this, uh, this, this is a polynomial, uh, uh, this, this is polynomial, how to say that, constraint? Okay, so uh, the, power, the power of x plus x equals to 260. Uh, if you look at first sight, you probably don't know what the actual answer is, and the problem can get very compli so complicated that uh, the computer cannot solve it, but only someone can, uh, only someone with an answer can answer it. Like you know, um, uh, like RSA, you know, like uh, yeah, things like that. But like fact factorization, um, if the prover have the answer to this question, they might want to 
uh, prove that they know the answer without revealing it. But before that, it, had to, it has to be translated to this RNCS constraint system. So you can see here are three constraints. We introduce two additional intermediate variables, Y and Z. And if you look very closely, you can see, well, uh, X is actually the X right there, uh, but we use three constraints to express the same thing as the example we provide. So all RNCS has to be written in this way. So you can see er each of three of these uh, constraints satisfy our definition of RNCS. Okay, so yeah, you can, you can multiply two things together. Each of them are only just additions. Okay, that's... So it's just a very quick example. It's not really not yet. We also tell we have so have to, have to tell the zk proving system which variables are private. So the proofs can be generated without revealing this information, and some of the inputs can be public. So what's more complicated is, for example, boolean. Uh, we have I have said that I've mentioned that we have only uh, finite field elements. So finite field elements. Uh, kind of can have kind of be compared to unsigned integers with a certain size. How do you c how do you express boolean in in a system that only allow uh, uh, unsigned integer or only uh, allow finite field elements? So uh, boolean expression can be can be expressed, but you have to be mimic in a way such as this. Um, if two finite field elements multiplied by itself is itself, then it's either one or zero. Um, in this way, we add a constraint to that variable to make it appear as a boolean. So um, this is a very simple example. You can do operations on that, like negation, and or, XOR. But as you can see, if you don't want just boolean, you want a lot of other constructs, like equalities, like conditionals. Uh, things can be very complicated very quickly. Um, so nobody wants to write this we are constrained manually. If all this can be expressed in languages, in human readable ways, they will be uh, much more better. So it's almost impossible to construct. We need a programming language and a compiler. Okay, so what uh, I think a lot of you might know what DSLs are, so I will introduce further. So we need a higher level intuitive way to describe the KP computations. And we want this language to be so uh, to be more intuitive, such that uh, people with our cryptography knowledge can use it, and we'll abstract the details on the line protocol, such as R1C S or AIR. So not only which can do uh, a lot of this language try to uh, mimic the style of C or you know Rust, but um, a lot of features in those language cannot cannot be used there. Or so we we just don't allow this in our language such that it's more intuitive. Uh, yes, most, most general programming language are just not designed for this. Okay. Here are some existing uh, DSLs, so we're just adding one more DSL. But all of them have standalone ecosystems. So what we do is that we embed Keylong, this language, in Haskell. It's a general purpose functional programming language that fits a really, it's a, uh, that plays a really great role um, uh, defining other languages. So uh, we have a compiler that's also written in Haskell, and it's based on Snarko. It's, it's an academic work by Golden Uh It's open sourced. So let's take a really quick look about, about Keylon. Uh, we have inherited all language features of Haskell, uh, such as its functions and module system. And when we maintain a simple, a small core language, um, and we do have a uh, interface between Keylong and Haskell such that we can use existing Haskell libraries uh, and functions. Uh, we have three primitive data types, which are field elements, booleans, and unsigned integers. So as you can see, uh, the boolean we define, uh, you can just use boolean directly in your language and without um, knowing the underlying weird constraints translations. And and we also have uh, a multi uh, we have keep tracks of the constraints on variables, and we also have simulated a mutable array. Uh, this is uh, a monad, so we use a monad. But if you, I can't talk about what a monad is. So if you want to know what a monad is, uh, we need like maybe maybe three more hours. Uh, so just yeah, just think of it as a 
environment, things like that. So what does a, what does a kilogram program look like? Um, here, it's a, a kilogram program is always a valid Haskell program. Um, and here, add one is a valid Haskell program, and this is the type signature of a Haskell program. We say, oh, add one is a Haskell uh, object. Um, we don't use object here. Uh, Haskell type, Haskell scene code comp of type comp field. Um, comp is a monad, and field is the uh, key long, is the type of the written, uh, is the written type of the key long program. So you can see this program take an input, a public input, a return, it is uh, added by one and return it. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So back to our example, if we want to assert something is to uh, assert, uh, we want to take, write a, describe a problem that is uh, we have the input of X and uh, we want to assert that uh, it, the, the, we have to add a constraint that uh, the power of 4x plus x is 260. We can write it this, this way, uh, which re uh, this program returns nothing, but it takes a private input. Okay, so we can generate constraints from the the program we just provided. Uh, here is a JCI, that's the the um, interactive interface of Haskell. So we use all the we use compile, which is provided by our Haskell uh, Kilon library, and you can see the constraints are generated. Uh, there are three constraints, and you can see they are is they are the same as w as we have provided. Okay, why not DSL? Because it's more flexible, extensible compared to existing languages. Because we have made use of existing Haskell ecosystems, so uh, Haskell is very ex expressive and yes, very advanced type system. A, a lot of weird uh, weirdos have embed a lot of weird languages in Haskell. Like you can write HTML in Haskell, you can write C in Haskell. Uh, they are all uh, totally embedded in Haskell. Without you can write them as the program in, in mind, but they are actual Haskell programs. So yeah, it has yes uh, yes as a uh, the purity feature is very nice because we don't want side effects in Kilon, and the ecosystem can be reused. Uh, we use Haskell's building system, uh, Haskell testing and package managers, and of course the documentary libraries, and of course we have. Um, we hope this could reach more developers than uh, the existing uh, DSLs because all of them are standalone DSLs you have to learn from scratch. So here's a compiler overview. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, will, I won't go into detail here, but in, in general, uh, we separate the syntax trees and constraints, and the compiler just compile the syntax uh, into the constraints. So when writing a has code, you don't. We're writing the Kilon program. You don't have to comp. Uh, you don't have to worry about the constraint. At, oh, the compiler will handle it for you. Okay. So we have meta. Uh, we have a lot of features going on, but we just we we'll just do a very brief view, quick, very quickly. We have meta programming Kilon. Meta programming Kilon is essentially pr programming Haskell. But you write Haskell that generate Kilon programs, so it's meta programming Kilon. And yeah, we can reuse function anywhere, reuse Kilon function as well as reuse meta programs of Kilon. Uh, we have loops, uh, which, for example, in this example, we add strings together, and we have conditionals, uh, uh, which are uh, which can be translated to our CS constraints as well. Okay, so uh, like for example, let's do a quick test. Uh, we will, I won't provide answers here, and if you want to do some, you can think about it yourself. Uh, factorization is an example that um, a lot of people want. Uh, this one, factorization, it, I take a, this program takes a public input, and they take two private inputs. So the prover want to provide two private inputs, uh, private uh, primes they know, and the verifier want to verify that, okay, so there is a public input that is, um, that is, how do you say that? D divisor, divisor, not divisor, multi factor. Okay, X and Y are both factors of Q, yeah. Um, there are a lot of constraints here. So if, think of it, think of it, uh, X and Y and Q as how do you translate unsigned integers to fields to fix because this program can be compiled with any given field we support. Like, for example, we have field that has only 64 bits width, 
how do you how do you support this small field? Uh, how do you use this small field to represent a large uh, unsigned integer that is uh, with the width of 128? Okay. Um, yeah, but we can do that. You can write this in 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 Kilon, but if you want to do this in the constraint yourself, you're going to be very problematic. Um, okay, we use the sequence of boolean to re represent, represent unsigned integers. That's one thing, okay. But the this, this problem was still not solved yet. Um, the re this, for example, this kind of representation, we use eight boolean integers just like the computers do. Uh, it represents a two, 252, uh, 55. So yeah, we have unsigned integers. Uh, we have dependent types in Kilom, which can uh, uh, assign the width of unsigned integers to compile time and, other, and do a lot of things. Uh, we have assertions, like I showed. Uh, of course, we also have, okay, that's, that's just, we also have other features such as mutable arrays, uh, of course, and unsigned integers of arbitrary, ar arbitrary long bit width. We can just use arbitrary long with bit width. And we have operators on this unsigned integers, uh, not just operators on prime, um, but they look kind of the same. And we also have custom data types. You can, you can write Haskell data types and use any Kilon as long as this data types can be encoded into Kilon, into Kilon fields or Kilon booleans or Kilon unsigned integers. Um, the translate process is up to you, but I have we have been autom we have automated this translate process so you can use any data types you want and our compiler will determine if it can be translated to uh, Kilon programs and then our NCS. So yeah, we have we want to use as much existing Haskell code in Kilon as possible, and yeah, this can be uh, skipped. Okay, so toolings. Uh, we yeah, this also can be seen. We have also a GitHub code space playground. Uh, do we have time for the live demo? Yeah, I don't know. My computer is because the computer issue. We can do a live demo right now. We have some future roadmap like more more libraries, crypto key primitives, more half hash functions, signatures, ciphers, DID standards. Yeah, and new backends. We are supporting Plunk H2. We have integration with Snark.js, which is not complete, but will be complete yet. So thank you very much for the talk. If, um, thanks for coming. And we still have like five minutes for Q and A's. So if there's any problem, please raise your hand now. Hey, please. Oh, okay. okay. okay um, so the result of the compilation process would be the prover and the verifier programs. Well, Do I understand uh, this correctly? Do you mean the compilation process? Yes, I, I, I write my Keylong program, oh. which is Haskell, pretty much. I have the compiler. Yeah, yeah. so the compiler actually only, only compiles the programs into constraints. And after that, we feed them to the proving system, which I haven't mentioned here. I, I didn't mention any proving system at all, uh, but for example, Snark.js have integrated some proving systems, and with Aurora proving systems, uh, they, have, they have provided other libraries, uh, other executables that generate proof and verifier. Okay, so the constraint that falls out of the compiler, um, in order to use that, I don't need Haskell. To use what? I, in order to use that, I don't need Haskell. It's just for the generation of the contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If to to okay, okay. prove and verify things, you don't need Haskell at all. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks. So, so after developing the ZK applications, uh, you put the compiled constraints online or anywhere, and the proof and verifier can just download the prover, proving and verifying binaries without using Haskell at all. Yeah. So, any more questions? Okay. If there's no. Um, I just have one more thing to add. S that is, I am going to be holding a BOF, Bird of Feeder, today. Uh, I'm finding people who like cocktails. So if you have good taste and you drink a lot, please contact me. We'll drink till we are all down. And we only drink good cocktail bars. So thank you very much. <laughs>